we do an exercise in class that's like your red flags and your green flags. Like when should you feel good? When should you be worried? And I recommend that everyone do that at the beginning of their study plan. Joya back for another MCAT podcast, breaking down uh, study plans and and study schedules the last couple episodes. This week, we're going to jump into a long study plan, uh, six plus months. Why would someone want to study for the MCAT that long? A couple of reasons. So one is if they are really unfamiliar with a lot of content. If they're like, I have been out of school for a really long time. I know I haven't taken a bunch of content. I really need to like get re-familiarized with stuff that I haven't seen in, in literal years. That is one very good reason to be like, okay, I'm going to take some extra time for this. Because you don't want to jump in with a familiarity that is completely not helpful to learning the content for the MCAT. So that's one reason. Another reason is just having a lot of non-negotiable other obligations. So having kids, having a really demanding job, having kids and a really demanding job, being in school, having family obligations, whatever it is. There are a lot of people who just have a life that is not reorganizable for the MCAT. They're like, it would be lovely to like cut down on XYZ commitment, but I can't because that commitment is a human person that I'm responsible for. And I see a lot of parents um, that I work with who take the six month plus and it works for them because then they don't have to try and not be around their children. Um, So that's a really big one is just a life that does not fold into the MCAT box easily. And then also just having unexpected things arise and needing to extend the study plan. So a lot of people in the six month plus range didn't actually mean to be in the six month month plus range, but then had to for some reason. So I was one of those. I had my MCAT rescheduled on me due to COVID. And so my six month turned into a nine month because it got pushed back several times. So there's a lot of reasons that people end up here. Um, But all of them, I think, minus the last one, the two intentional six month plus plans, I think are great for people who need more time to learn things and get through material and also need more flexibility. If you have more than six months, you have a little bit more wiggle room on a given week to move things around and still be able to stay on track. Okay. So the two biggest reasons, so just reframe it a little bit, two biggest reasons someone needs more time for content review, which generally in kind of that four to six month range, it's a big mistake that students make doing too much content review. But if you're planning on six plus months, go for it, right? Just content review to your heart's desire because you're not hurting the downstream tests and and practice questions and all of that. Correct. Or you have to go slower, you have less hours per day or less days Mm -hmm. per week that you're able to study because of other obligations. So two very good reasons potentially to need more than six months to study. But that comes with consequences. It does. It's it's not all roses. Like everyone should study more than six months because, hey, it's more time. But what are the issues with that? Well, time also means time to forget and time to get rusty and time to burn out. So that's, I think, the biggest issue with long tests is, or like long test prep periods is you can lose your momentum like really easily. It's very much easier to procrastinate when you have such a long period of time because that flexibility gets tempting. You're like, oh, I've got nine months. Mm -hmm. What's a week? What's the month? What's three months? And then you're all of a sudden you're suddenly in a one to three month prep period and you're like, oh no, this is not what I meant to do. So I think the time can mess mentally with people a lot. Um, But I also think that for people who are really anxious about actually applying or doing it, the really, really long period can sometimes add to that anxiety and people keep pushing things back and they keep saying, wait, maybe I'll do it later. Maybe I'll push it off. And that can be really hard. Um, I think the, the six month plus plan is it's, it's a, that's the like real mental marathon. We always talk about like the NCAT being a marathon, which it is, but preparing for a test for over six months is an ultra marathon. (laughs) And if that is not something that you did on purpose with a lot of like forethought and intentional goal setting and boundary setting for yourself, it can get out of control really easily. And it's hard to rein it back in once you've become used to, oh, I can just push it back a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to break out of that rut. 
So it's it's definitely a word of caution for thinking about studying for that long. Uh, and it's boring to study for that long. Yeah. The, other thing. the The biggest fear for me for someone is the procrastination angle because we are very good at overestimating what we can do in a short amount of time. And we underestimate what we can do in a long amount of time. We overestimate what we can do in a short amount of time. And so you go, oh, like I was supposed to study today, but you know what? My favorite football team is playing or I'm going to go shopping with my girlfriends or whatever. (laughs) It's stereotyping. Um, uh, Both sides. Both sides. I appreciate that. Um, we, we, We go, I'm just going to take the day off. I just don't feel like it. I woke up. I have a sore yeah. throat, whatever. And okay, now we we open up our, our blueprint study planner tool and we have to drag all of that stuff over to the next day. But it's not just as easy as dragging everything over the next day because the next day had stuff on it. And yeah. I love, I don't know if you've seen it. I love the the pancake theory of medical school where medical school is like oh, yeah. eating 10 pancakes a day. You have to eat 10 pancakes a day. And sure, like very early on, you're like, oh my gosh, I love pancakes. This is amazing. But some days you only feel like eating five. Like you're like, I just don't feel like it or or none. And you have to eat 15 the next day. And you're like, well, I, I, I'm only used to eating 10. And so that five extra pancakes gets shifted over. And then guess what? You have another procrastination day. And now all of a sudden you have to eat 20 pancakes. And then it's just a snowball effect that that happens. And in our minds, we're like, oh, I still have six months. I still have five yeah. months. I still have four months. And you get to the end, you're like, where'd all my time go? That's, right. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. I think the pancake theory is a hilarious as an image because I'm just imagining like a person in a white coat covered in maple syrup, like, ah, uh, which is a beautiful image. Yes. But I think it's true for the MCAT too. I think you get to that point where you're like 24 hours away from an exam and you're like, I got 24 hours. I can do so much in 24 hours. And like, yeah. no, you can't is the problem. Yeah. And so I think that's hard. I think people... I think honesty with yourself about whether or not you're a procrastinator is like the most important thing to do. Like in your life as a human, I think becoming aware of whether or not you have a tendency towards procrastination is so important because Mm -hmm. if you don't know that about yourself, you will perpetually make decisions as if you don't procrastinate and they will perpetually bite you in the butt every time. I think that's like a really good thing to do at the beginning of any like major undertaking is like, honestly speaking, how much am I going to procrastinate? Like, let's be real. How often am I going to push stuff off? And you should build it into your schedule to know that you have X, Y, Z tendencies to do whatever. And like, that's really important. I was working and still volunteer with a crisis hotline. And so I had these on-call shifts on Saturday nights that sometimes I would get called and sometimes I wouldn't. And so in my mind, when I was making my MCAT schedule, I was like, that's study time on Saturday night. Mm. And then after a couple of weeks, I was like, that's not study time. The likelihood that I'm going to get called is too high for me to depend on those hours that night. And I need to be aware that Sunday morning is also not really going to be study time because if I get called in at 3 a.m. and I get home at 7, I'm going to sleep. Or if I don't sleep, I'm going to study poorly. So I have to get much more honest with like the real time that I had. And I think a lot of people in the six month plus period are often people who are fitting st- studying in around a lot of other things. Mm-hmm. So they have to be very honest about what their real downtime looks like. I hear a lot of people say like, oh, I'll do X, Y, Z, like between patients at work or I'll do it on my break or I'll do it on my this. And I'm like, will you though? <laughs> will you? Exactly. Like, w- like, like, honestly, will you? If you're saying you're going to use your lunch break to study, are you actually going to do that five days out of the week? Yeah. Or is it more reasonable to say, I'll be able to do lunch studying twice a week and not at all during the holidays. Yeah. And it's like, that's real. That helps you prevent the snowball because you preemptively said that day I have to eat 17 pancakes because I'm only going to be eating whatever it is, three on the previous day. Yeah. You have to be honest about that, especially in the six plus month period. Yeah. Um, don't overestimate your free time. The other major, major thing that I see that kind of comes along with the procrastination is typically if you're studying for like eight months, you can't register for the MCAT at that time that you're starting to study. And so you're starting to study with this theoretical, I'm going to take the MCAT around this time. 
And then you get scared because you're procrastinating. Yes. You're like, well, I'm not going to be ready, so I'm going to push it back. And then I can procrastinate more because I, I don't have it scheduled. And so, ah, it's no big deal. And I find, uh, especially this last year, I, I, I ran Group Coaching Application Academy. A lot mm. of people are pushing back to the next cohort of students because they yep. just couldn't fit in the MCAT. They, they, they didn't properly plan uh, doing all, this thing, all these things that we're talking about, or life got in the way or whatever. And, and um, so not being able to have a concrete date that they're registered for and they know yeah. I need to be ready by this date is a potential hindrance as well. Yeah, the, the imaginary, I'm hypothetically taking a test on this day, it's like so, it's mentally debilitating. Like yeah. that's what happened to me when I was like, I don't know when I'm gonna take it. Will it be June? Will it be August? Will it be next year? Will it be never? Is the world gonna exist by the time I'm ready to take it? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, That's horrible. Um, I, I lie to myself in my calendar and I highly recommend lying to yourself in your calendar. Make up a date, make right. it up and like make it red and make it bold and put it there. And you can lie to yourself on your planner in Blueprint. You can pick a date <laughs> for the test, even if it's not a real date um, and just have it there mm -hmm. and it'll say test day on your, on your planner. And I think that mentally is really useful if you are studying before you have a registered date and then make registration day like a thing. Make it a thing and tell someone about it. Tell someone who will shame you for not doing it, that you're going to register on that day. Like have some accountability set up so that, you know, gentle people who will understand if it's a real reason to push it back, but have the people in your life who pull few enough punches that if you're procrastinating for no real reason, will be like, you suck, go register for your test. Yeah. I think that's really important. Um, I, I very much could have been someone who pushed back a cohort if I didn't have a few honest and and like slightly tough love people in my life who are like just do it just do it <laughs> you're not going to be any more ready a month from now than you are right now just yeah. do it do not delay your test again and i was like love you're it. right you're right because i got rescheduled i had my july test date and then i got like a month away from it and i was like oh maybe i should just <laughs> apply next semester or I, next 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 year i'm not ready yeah. and they were like you're ready you were ready months ago just do it and like you need, everybody needs a little shy of love in their life going, do it, just do it. Like you need that. And you need that, especially if you are starting to study prior to having a date. So I think we need a little lie, a little lie in your calendar, yeah. a little tough love from your, from your loved ones yeah. um, is important. Yeah. Because procrastination just gets away from yeah. We we need to set up a, a like a hotline. It's like one eight hundred MCAT love, and, and you just dial idea. it, and it's just a recording. Like you got this. Like don't just keep going. Just do it. Like that'd be fun. Right? I love that. <clears throat> we'll do it. I'll like do a it. tone menu of like, do you need tough love? Do you need like <laughs> gentle? Gentle reassurance. Yes. Do you need something funny? Yes. Go. Yes. I will work on that hotline. I love it. All right. I got it. I got it. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and, and bring up uh, our amazing blueprint study planner tool. Um, yes. If you are listening on the podcast only, go to our, our YouTube at premed.tv uh, and go to the end of the episode where we'll show you this. Again, this is a free study planner tool that you get with a, a free blueprint account. Um, and this is what set up for eight months. Yep. This is an eight month study okay. plan. Um, this assumes I've already taken my diagnostic and then it has a very light smattering of modules per day. This is like yeah. very doable if you're a super busy person and you have a nice long content block before you start taking full lengths. And then you see them start to come in. You see them come in every other week and then you have a little bit more content time and then you hit your wow. AMC prep time in your last month. And so I, I do want to make a caveat though, which is that this looks really light, mm -hmm. but module alone, that's not all you do that day. You like do that module you should be doing some spaced repetition, whether it's flashcards or like practice questions or something. You should be like also learning the thing, not just watching the module. So I, I think that's important when you look at the study plan. Um, Blueprint is great in that it lets you put the different content pieces on different days. Yeah. What it does not have that you should be scheduling in is how much time you're going to take to review the module, to go over the questions, to do your flashcards for the day, especially if you are a six month plus test taker you need to have spaced repetition in your schedule or you will forget stuff. And yeah. that will be so painful when you have to go back and relearn it from scratch at month eight. You don't want to do that. So the thing that is kind of grain of salt with um, with any study plan tool is that this can't, because it's not psychic, 
include how long you need to take doing your other review, making notes or flashcards or study sheets or going over previous days work or whatever. So just keep that in mind that although the individual module per day number is very low compared to the four month plan, there is still hidden work in there Mm -hmm. that you should be accounting for in your day. Don't think that you can just watch a singular module and consider yourself done for the day. That is not enough to to learn something. Um, I'm a big fan of scheduling specific things in my, I'm a Google calendar girl. I schedule like do module X. And then after that, like 20 minutes of flashcards, 30 minutes of blah, 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 10 minutes of staring at the wall. And I'm serious. Like I schedule in my zone out time. I'm like in this hour that I said I was going to study, I can afford up to 10 minutes of being an idiot. And that's fine because I planned for it. But when you do a study plan that's this long, you have to make sure you work in things like your flashcard sessions, because there is no real way for the app to know which flashcards you're going to do, because you won't know Mm -hmm. until you've gotten some stuff wrong and need to go back to it. So that has to be a weekly thing. And I tell all my students to schedule a block, a block on the weekend somewhere or on their lightest day that they assess and reassess their schedule for the upcoming week or two weeks. So look at what you did this past week, migrate the things that you didn't get to, give yourself an honest grade of how thoroughly you really went through stuff, and then reconfigure the little bits and bobs that need to be reconfigured for the upcoming week. That's what I do every Sunday night. That's my Sunday night routine, is I reconfigure my schedule for the next week and see like, okay, I didn't actually get to the renal questions I was supposed to, Let me put them in this free block that I have on Tuesday morning. Like that's now what I have to do. And if you are a person who needs like priority to scare you into doing work, I have a like three strikes system. The first time I migrate something, it's not an emergency. The second time I push it back, it's like a code, middle, middle severity code. And the third time I push it, it's become a non-negotiable. And I change it to like bright red in my calendar. If I've pushed something three times that I was supposed to do, it's now non-negotiable and it goes to the top of the list. I have to do it that week. And I think that's really important to have some kind of a system. It doesn't have to be that one, but something for yourself if you're going to be a six-month plus studier of how you understand your own procrastination and when it becomes an emergency. We do an exercise in class that's like your red flags and your green flags. Like when should you feel good? When should you be worried? And I recommend that everyone do that at the beginning of their study plan because it really helps keep you on task. 